one of my overarching senses and reflections in post France, as in post versus France in France at Rugby World Cup 2023, it's been it's been an interesting period, sort of navel gazing and mulling and um, stewing even stewing maybe and not necessarily in a negative sense, but just allowing things to percolate within about where this All Blacks side is, where it's been, why it's here now, and because of where it's been, what is required for it into the future. That may sound very confusing, but I will get to my point and make it hopefully reasonably clear. If you remember in 2022, the All Blacks were in pretty difficult straits, dire straits even. And I know, you can throw the, do the walk of life. After Mbombala, after Nell Sprut, then it was up. It was up. The clock had struck and it seemed like Foster's reign was over. He's talked about, I think, that reality and others around. I had, um, I had been told by a contact that his contacts or those in the, in the rugby community, again, not comprehensive necessarily, but those had passed on to him that change was going to happen. And so I think reporters have affirmed that, you know, Razor was given the word to get your team together. And then Johannesburg happened. The, the result that no one expected, a result that, that showed an All Black side proving that the past wasn't just going to stay dead forever. Because that was what historic All Black teams do. They come back and they win and they have resilience and they thrive when it counts and they finish strong and they are the exclamation mark when the rugby contest is reviewed. And the players went into bat for... Uh, Foster, a lot of talk afterwards, and a lot of different players, and you could see, you could sense, even I've written about, the time to replace Foster, in one sense, was after the Irish series, if they were going to do it, because they allowed a situation to happen, and Johannesburg was the fuse, the players lit the match, and it provided that combustible environment where they could say, hey look, it's not Foster, it's been us, and look what happened. Look what happened on the field versus our strongest, the All Blacks, toughest and strongest rivals. And the story is they went and saw, I think, I think he's CEO, I think that's the right terminology, Mark Robinson, and said to him, you know, in person, and more than one about Foster. And my own reading of the circumstances is they basically said, hey, we're the line in the sand and we want him through to the Rugby World Cup. And the NZRU were seeing that and probably responded in light of that. Now, what the exact dynamic was, I'm not sure. I mean, you can't, you can only sort of guess or project or work, work sort of through from what we observe. But I'm thinking they said, well, they were added Jason Ryan and the NZRU probably said Joe Smith needs to be here. And with that team, we're confident and we'll back you through. And I'm sure the early part of 2023, they was like, man, that well, was good. It's good. It's looking good. It's looking positive. Recently, probably challenged that um, thesis and provided a bit more of a sober dynamic. But as I've thought about what happened there. The players who fought for Foster then must prove what they were fighting for now. They must stand up because now is when the real test of their words is going to be examined, counted and appraised. And so that's, I guess, the larger reality for me. It's the, it's the players after these especially these recent two performances, the lack of discipline and the various factors, it's the players, on the players, for me, I'm thinking, who is this on? I mean, I think Ryan and Schmidt add a lot. I mean, they would add a lot to any coaching team. 
and they'll be doing a lot of the work. But it's the players on the field who need to stand up. You fought for Foster when a lot, most of the country were happy to see change. And when even the leading body was heading that way. If, if what you said then was true to form, then you need to prove it. You need to stand up and need to perform on the field because now is when it counts. Now is when it counts. And yeah, that's my, that's been, I guess, one of my overarching sort of senses or my, my overarching vibes on this time. It's you made the bed, players. Don't only like lie in it, but get a good night's sleep. In other words, have your best game now. That's how you prove actually your words had substance. And I guess also, it's, you know, it may be sobering for the NZRU. Because sometimes in situations, and I'll use an analogy here, close up is generally, we view close up as being what we want. But you can actually be too close. Like you put your hand about a centimetre, this is good TV, good video, a centimetre from your face, and you lose all clarity of your hand. It becomes blurry. It can be like that in situations. And so these matches coming up will tell us whether or not the players have had the really good close-up view or whether they had their hand right so close to their face, their relationship was so tight with Foster that it was actually too close for the right type of comfort or discomfort that was required which is the type of comfort that, or lack thereof that leads to objectivity, that leads you to be able to call a spade a spade. So as I think about this in a larger reality, what's acceptable? What's acceptable for this All Blacks unit in light of what was transpiring, in light of a really tough, difficult period? And we can talk about, and I've talked about where I would have headed post-2019, but... That's happened. We've had COVID. We've had messy stuff. Um, it's impacted Super Rugby. It impacted the Rugby Championship. So all that's transpired. So the, the, it hasn't been easy. So there are other factors there as well. But in light of the decision to retain Foster, what's an acceptable outcome at this Rugby World Cup? Now, I've got my thinking, and I've got my, I guess, placement in the tournament. Historically, the All Blacks have wanted to win every test match and wanted to win every World Cup. It's obvious they haven't won every test match and it's really obvious they, obvious they haven't won every World Cup. But the aspiration and the commitment to those ideals has been there. Is it the same in 2023? If the, all, if the NZRU at the end of the World Cup get that placement or you know, when I say that, I mean wherever you decide, is that acceptable? I'm telling you now that the quarterfinal exit is not acceptable. I don't think any rugby person will say, oh, we got to the quarterfinal, whoopee. That's not acceptable. So whether or not, whoever, whoever they're playing, whether they play, and let's just give it like the full realm, um, between Ireland, South Africa, and Scotland, I'm saying it's Ireland or South Africa, either of those sides are going to be a huge challenge and may even have favouritism, probably have favouritism for those outside Aotearoa outside New Zealand. So a loss there is unacceptable. And yet that could be, that could potentially happen. Now, if that's the case, and if that's unacceptable, then I guess we have um, some further context or a greater context to give food for, um, food for thought on the foster reign and the foster decision after Joburg and whether or not in the light of the fullness of Rugby World Cup 2023 was that a wise decision and and is that even a fair way of analyzing it I'm sure there are certain who want to be defense attorneys there but that is going to be the test and the players need to understand that and if players understand that, that it is the results at a semi, a quarterfinal, excuse me, and then a semi final, and you may even say the result in the final that counts. If, if actually those are required, 
to justify foster all three, then that's a huge mountain to climb. You may not necessarily say that. However, it's in my opinion, no one should land at a quarterfinal. So what is required to justify the foster decision? When change was on the horizon, well, no, no, it wasn't on the horizon. It was right at the doorstep. And I would suggest that because of the player's intervention, both on the field and off the field, that was the difference in why Foster survived. And therefore, it is now incumbent on the players to, again, on the field, and not really off the field, I mean, that, that job has been done, but now it's incumbent on them on the field to prove their case and to substantiate their decision because now that is the only courtroom where a decision can be justified. And so it's quite fascinating as we look forward in the coming weeks. Namibia, tomorrow, Italy in two weeks' time, and then following Uruguay, and then hopefully, hopefully, and uh, a quarterfinal. And that is going to be one heck of an occasion, and which is, is, is mouth-watering, but also the stakes are high, and a lot will be written, or could be written, if it doesn't go the way that the All Blacks will want. And the potential is real. So, hopefully I've made it clear what this video is about, how you can respond, and what is acceptable. Where the All Blacks need to finish for the Foster run to be viewed as acceptable. What is that? What say you? Like, share, and subscribe. And that would be wonderful. I am Johnny King.